Hey everyone. So I'm excited to announce that I got a new addition to my whole shoe closet. I got a whiteboard for Christmas. So now I'm able to actually teach and explain things better visually. So I'm looking forward to that in the future. So in my previous videos, I did mention that I'm an environmental engineer. And I did get like a few questions asking, what do environmental engineers actually do? And even I thought about this when I was pursuing my degree. So in this video, I want to go over what environmental engineers do. So you can Google what environmental engineers do, and it gives out a pretty broad definition. They say something like, they do engineering practices that helps the environment or pollute less. They try to make processes more efficient using engineering practices and so on. Just something very broad in general like that. But that to me is very broad and doesn't really help distinguish what every environmental engineer would be doing. And sometimes you go to school, you'll be learning one aspect of a field, but then when you go out and find a real job, you don't use any of that thing that you learn in school. So in this video, I want to tell you straight up that probably what you learn in school won't be what you're going to be doing on a job. So currently, I have the title as an environmental engineer at my work. But when I Google what environmental engineers do, I notice that some other job titles have the same job description. So my job description is an environmental engineer. And hopefully you guys can read this. I'll just get my little pointy stick. I'm an environmental engineer here, but when I'm looking up online, I noticed that an environmental compliance specialist does the same thing as to what I'm doing right now. So in a way, even though I have the title as an environmental engineer, I can pretty much interchangeably say that I'm also an environmental compliance specialist. So I've seen job descriptions that have environmental compliance specialists with the same job description. I've seen environmental health and safety engineers with the same job description again. We're doing the same thing, it's just that we have different titles. So this is why I want to clarify that you may have the title as being an environmental engineer, but you might be doing something similar to that of an environmental compliance specialist or an environmental safety engineer. Okay, so I just want to point that out. They might have different pays, they might have different job requirements and certifications, but overall, you guys might be doing the same thing and working together side by side with your whatever job you're doing. Okay, so now on to the juicy part. So here's what I do at my facility. And each job, each environmental engineer, will be different. So at my facility, you can imagine it as being like a little city. I'm just going to be pretty straightforward. I work on an Air Force base. So in that Air Force base, there's things like the commissary. So that's where they process foods. They have a gas station. So that's where they have like storage tanks, you know, gas tanks. They have a medical clinic. They have a dental clinic. So they have things like, you know, pharmaceuticals and maybe dental cleaning supplies. They have maintenance operation vehicles, so you know people who are cutting the grass, they have to put it in like the gasoline, their oils, and so on. We generate waste too, so we have things like trash, we have recyclables, and so on. So again, just like a mini city, we have to monitor different things within this facility. And so that means we have different programs that we have to allocate with each environmental engineer at my work. And behind me is a list of some of the categories I can think of. So some of the environmental programs that we have is things like air, water, hazardous waste, hazardous materials, solid waste. Again, you can just imagine this as like a mini city. So we have things that you have to monitor. Underground storage tanks, this is a gas station. We do have some historical sites because we still have to monitor and make sure that we're not like digging up any fossils or anything if we're trying to do some construction projects. You have natural resources, energy and recycling and so on. This is just a list of a few things that I can think of currently at the top of my head, but I'm pretty sure we do have more. I just don't know everything all together right now. And so we have all these programs that we have to monitor and make sure that we're following because we have federal rules that we have to make sure that we're following. So the EPA sets these rules and because we're living in California, we have even more strict laws. So overall, each state will have certain laws that they'll abide by. And California being the most strict, will probably have more strict rules, meaning you're not allowed to pollute even more than the federal laws. I hope that concept wasn't too confusing for you to grasp. So let's go back to these environmental programs I have on the board. So I have a list of 10 environmental programs here, but I don't manage all of them. This is split up between all of my coworkers. So the ones in blue are the ones that I currently operate and manage. So I operate and manage hazardous waste, hazardous materials, solid waste, uh, recycling, and some of the above and underground storage tanks when my co-workers in there I'm just trying to like just touch the water on that so I'm not too familiar with that program but I am starting to delve into that just in case he happens to be sick or is on vacation I can at least answer some questions on, on this program 
Although again, I'm not the specialist in that program. So let's go over hazardous waste and hazardous materials. Really, that's my specialty at work. That's what I do mostly on a day-to-day -day basis. So what does this mean when I'm in charge of this hazardous waste, hazardous materials program? So going back to my facility, we have like a maintenance crew that uses oils and produces oily rags. They have gasoline in their vehicles. The whole point of this hazardous materials program is to tell the Air Force saying, hey, these guys, this operation crew, they're using say 500 gallons of oil every single month. And so we just have to make sure that the Air Force is informed as to how much a certain material is being used and how often they use it. Overall, it's just trying to make sure that they know what we're using. They want to know that we know that it's dangerous. And overall, it's just to inform everyone that we are using this material and this much amount. We're here to monitor and make sure that everyone is following the rules and that we know what materials is on base. And how I monitor this hazardous materials program is really I'm just walking around the base, inspecting, saying, what do you have? What are you hiding? Do you have everything stored properly? Do you have everything labeled? So if I open this bottle here, will I know what's inside of it? You know, is it poisonous for me? Or is it just water? How much of it do you have? How often do you use it? I'm really just talking to people to make sure that they're following the rules, making sure that it's labeled and stored properly. And so that's just one of the environmental program that I'm dealing with. That's just how I handle hazardous materials. I don't really want to go over all of it. I know I have some other blue things here on the list, but that's just sort of a bit too much for you to take on as of right now. Maybe in the future I'll go over into more detail as to what I do on a day-to-day -day basis. But overall, I just want to give you the gist as to what environmental engineers do. I know when I applied to school as an environmental engineer, graduated, when I think of the term engineer, I was thinking that I would be sitting in the office with all these computer screens, looking at blueprints, or having this computer software programs like you know AutoCAD or MicroStation. I'd be just looking at blueprints and dealing with like GIS things all day. But that's more towards actual engineering and like design and architect. I don't do any of that at all. I don't even have to use computer software to do my job. And I'm saying this because you're probably thinking the same thing too. As an engineer, you'd think you'd be doing office desk job, but I'm not and you're probably not going to be doing that too, depending on your job description. So be on the lookout for things like this. Your environmental engineer could be doing something like environmental compliance. And don't be upset if you happen to be doing what I'm doing, unless you want to go towards that actual engineering route where you're dealing with software and other actual engineering processes. The job that I'm doing right now is not difficult at all. It's really just dealing with people and I'm actually moving a lot more than I am sitting at a desk. So I hope this cleared up some questions for some of you guys. Hopefully this was informative. If you liked the video, go ahead and leave a comment. For any environmental engineers out there, leave a comment as to what you're actually doing too. I'm curious as to know, are you guys doing what I'm doing? Or are you doing what I think you guys are doing in terms of like actual creating processes, dealing with things like AutoCAD and so on? I know we have the same title, but I know we're doing different things. And I just want to know, is what I'm saying actually true? And do you guys feel like you want to switch towards compliance too? Just let me know. Okay, so hopefully this cleared up some questions, and I'll see you in the next video.